Hey everybody out there, my name is Jason Reynolds, otherwise known as Reds, and thank you for joining me for my segment of Locked Up with a Digital. Um, I reside in Orangeville, Ontario, which is a small town just an hour north of Toronto in Canada. And thanks to Gear Audio, our Canadian distributors for Digital, I find myself locked up with a Quantum 338. Um, the brand new Quantum 338, I should say. It's very exciting. I've been playing around a lot on this desk. I've been practicing my mixing, getting better, hopefully. <laughs> and I've been doing a lot of teaching, um, teaching people how to use the digital consoles as well as teaching mix master classes. Um, so it's it's been a very eventful time. I hope everybody is out there staying safe and healthy and staying encouraged. Um, definitely we will get through this and we will be back out to doing shows again, I'm sure, soon. So in the first segment of my Locked Up With A Digital series, I'll share with you how I set up my console, how I lay out the console. Um, and then in the second segment, we'll talk a little bit about um, how I use macros and integrate waves, as well as um, using snapshots uh, with waves. So um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I am the monitor engineer and production manager for Shaggy. I'm also a monitor engineer for the Marley Brothers and assistant production manager. And I am the front of house engineer and tour manager for the band Magic. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica. Like I said, now I reside in Canada. And I'm extremely humbled by this opportunity. So let's jump into it and I can show you how I um, set up the console and lay it out for use with Magic at front of house. Um, if you have the offline editor, um, you can jump on and follow along. Um, uh, I'll switch to an overhead camera, so hopefully it gives you a better view of what I'm doing, and hopefully you can see. But you can definitely follow on along in the in the offline editor. So this is the Quantum 338, as we as we said. Um, so we'll go a little bit through how I set up the console and how I usually build a file. I'll talk a little bit about how I integrate um, virtual sound check and. I obviously use um, my computer to track um, pretty much every show that we do. I'm usually on a digital SD10, but like I said, I, I was able to convert my file and bring it up on the 338. So I always start with session structure. I'll move this down to make sure that you guys can see that. When you open up, if you click on file and go to session structure, this is where you can select how many input channels, you can se select your um, sample rate, um, this particular one is at 48K. Most of the classes that I'm teaching online, we're using 48K just for streaming. Uh, makes a little bit more sense. Um, this particular one, this is also where you, you select how many aux buses. I have eight stereo aux buses set up. Uh, group buses are also selected here. So I have, I have six mono and eight stereo. And then this is where you would also go if you... Let's say you walk up to a console and you want to start building a file from scratch. You can hit default all and that is how you quickly um, reset the console back, back to its default settings. Um, after I go there, my next step is usually to go to audio IO, which is under the setup tab. You click on audio IO and I want to make sure that all my my IO that's connected to the console is being seen by the console. Beside me here, I do have a SD rack um, that is loaded with 32-bit cards, which sound fantastic. Um, they're incredible. Um, and this is where I would make sure that all that is showing up correctly. If you can see and zoom in on your video, I'm not sure, but I have rack 1.11, which is my um, SD rack there. I have a UAD setup. I, I use UAD live at time, from time to time. Um, Waves is integrated into the console. I have a MADI port that I use. My I have a, I own a DigiGrid MGB. But the cool thing about this console and any of the Quantum Series console consoles is it has the UB MADI built in, which is extremely handy. Um, even if you're working at 96K, the UB MADI has sample rate conversion built in. So you get 48 ch um, channels, 48 tracks at 48K um, bi-directional on the UB MADI. So it goes out 
and back in. So for purposes of this demonstration and teaching, I am using the UB MADI, and that's where I'm copying audio to and back in for purposes of, of, of virtual sound check. So once I make sure that all my audio I.O. is set up correctly in terms of my workflow, then I go to options. I want to make sure that the console is behaving how I'm used to, used to using it. Um, so some of the things I look for on the surface, I always turn on bank switch assign screens. So what that does is instead of having to use a screen assign button, um, when I switch bank, it automatically assigns the screen, especially that that's a habit I've built because especially when using the SD10, which is only one screen, it, it's really quick for workflow. So those are one of the things I, I usually look for on 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 the console i can also adjust my brightness here adjust um how i want to see my delay units whether it be in seconds milliseconds feet bpm sometimes for my effects i use bpm if i know the bpms of the songs um, this is also where i set up waves to be integrated into the into the console um, to enable the the external waves so that's that's the next thing i do which is the option screen once I do that, I want to go into layout, which is if you click on layout, the layout tab, and then click on channel list, you are able to pull up all your list of channels. Before I start moving stuff around and making my, my console layout um, customized to how I like it, I want to go ahead and label all my channels so that I can patch in order. You can also select which layer and bank the channels are on in this screen but i like to do that on the console so i'm seeing it as i'm doing it but i go ahead and i label all my inputs um, if you click on edit and then click on a channel it will bring up the keyboard or you can use the keyboard underneath to be able to this is a quick way to edit all your channels so once i have my channels um once i have my channels labeled now I can start to lay out the console how I like it. Then this is, again, just my workflow. This is how I do it. It's not necessarily a right or a wrong way, but that's usually my next step um, is I start to lay out my console. So how I lay out my console, if you're, you should still, yes, you're still on my overhead camera. My first layer on my left bank is usually my drums. So, um, this is my first layer here, and I tend to use the w one of the big reasons why I enjoy using digital consoles is that the layout is completely customizable. I can move faders around fairly easy. I can assign faders. Um, so here I have my kick in and out. I have snare top and bottom, snare rim. So in reggae music, we use a, a microphone on on the on the rim shot. Um, just to get it pronounced a little bit in the mix, I use a Sennheiser E604 for that. Um, I should mention I am a member of the DPA Masters Club, so that is the only microphone on my drum kit that is not a DPA microphone, is the E604 on the rim. I have a second snare, which is a side snare for the drummer. Hi-hats, four toms, and this is what is unique and I like especially about digital consoles is multi-input channel strips. Um, in order for me to fit my entire drum kit on 12 faders, I have to use what, what's called a multi-input strip. And the reason why that is, is because the drum kit is more than 12 inputs, 12 channels. So by combining, I use what, what I refer to as my metals strip. And if I unfold that, you will see my overhead left, overhead right, and my ride microphone all combine into one multi-input strip so that allows me to keep my drum kit on on one layer now if we go over to my right side my right bank layer one i have the spd sx which is a drum pad um, guitar tracks um, which is not just guitar tracks that's like music tracks but i've always labeled it guitar tracks i have vocal tracks which is these are all these three are stereo channels so instead of having to again you can make a channel a stereo channel so it doesn't have to take up the space of two faders so i have music tracks vocal tracks and the loop right and then next to that i have bass di 
And this space I normally I'll drop in. Sometimes the bass player uses a key bass or a micro korg. Um, this particular show that we did in India, he wasn't using it that night, so I just take it off the surface. Um, so I don't get confused when I'm mixing and taking a quick glance. And then I have guitar left and right and a stereo channel for the Nord keyboard. This is all my stage right stuff. So the guitar player plays the keyboard as well. So I have that grouped together. So it makes it really easy when I'm glancing at the console. Everything is grouped together visually. If I jump back over to my left side again, layer two, this is where all my vocals are, my lead dry, lead wet. And when I talk about macros, I'll talk a little bit about how I use that. Um, one channel is just the dry channel, one channel. We, we do use tuning, um, waves tune live. So that's my wet channel and I use a macro to switch between the two. And then I have my two background vocals, Mark Pelletzer, the guitar player, and Ben Spivak, the bass player. And then on my right bank, second layer on my right bank is where all my effects are and my microphone that I'm talking to you through, which again is a DPA 6066. Yeah, I had to shout out DPA. So that's all my effects. Um, I have eight effects on, 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 on this particular file. I have a drum verb, a vocal plate, vocal hall, uh, a slap delay, a tap delay, and then I have a quarter and a one eight for, for dubbing. Um, and then a splash, a splash reverb for dubbing. So that's my that's my layout of inputs. If we go to my center section, on layer one, first bank is my control groups, <coughs> and um, you know I grew up mixing mixing on analog desks using VCA, so I I continue that same habit and do most of my mixing here. Once I have my my stuff dialed in on my input faders, I tend to spend most of the show right here in the middle on control groups and they're set up for VCA style. So my my first group is drums, which is kick, snares, hi-hats and metals and that includes the SPD SX as well. And then I have a second control group for toms. It's really handy having 12, 12 um, faders that I can dedicate to control groups rather than eight on some other desks. Um, having 12 a lot on, in one area, um, cause you, obviously you can have more than 12 control groups, but have being able to have 12 on one layer, I can really get, um, dial in with my control groups and not have to combine a whole bunch of things to one. So I have my drums again, which is kick snares, hi-hat overheads, my metals overheads on ride and SPD. And then I have all my toms on, on, on a separate control group. I, I like to mix with the toms kind of forward in the mix and tom heavy. Um, and so I, I, I can push that up or bring those back um, depending on the song. And then I have my tracks, which is my music tracks and my loop. Um, my bass, which is my bass guitar. Um, sometimes I use a combination of a DI line um, from, from Ben is an Aguilar artist and he uses a, a little preamp pedal. So I'll take a DI line out of that. I'll also take a line out of the amp, an XLR line out of the amp. And then I also have key bass in this control group as well. Um, next, I got my guitar group, which has guitar left and right acoustic. Um, sometimes we'll use an acoustic on a show. So it'll be in that control group. And then I have a keys um, control group that has the Nord in there. Leads, which is the lead dry and wet channel. Uh, background vocals, which is the vocal tracks and Mark and Ben's vocal. And then I have a band control group. Now, the reason why I do that is, is for whatever reason, if I ever want to push the band up or bring them back a little bit, instead of having to use all 10 fingers and try to keep the mix the same, I have a, I have a, a control group that has all the band now in, 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 in one group so I can bring them up, bring them down. Then I have my dub verb, which is controlling the send to my splash verb. So when I go to join, leave, or to assign what goes to that group, I'm assigning the aux send, not the return. So that's how I run my effects. I use my control groups to con control the send. Then I have my dub delay, which is my quarter and my one eighth. And then I have a tap delay, um, which I'm using a macro to set the tap tempo on that. 
I do use a combination of onboard effects as well as waves. And again, we'll, in the second segment that I do, we'll talk a little bit about how I'm integrating waves. I use Super Rack and I control that from my laptop um, with a Waves Extreme server. So I have my auxes here going to my eight effects. And again, that's a combination of stuff in, in Waves in Super Rack and also onboard effects. And then groups. Um, this is what to me makes digital consoles special and unique is the ability to bus groups into groups. Um, when I was growing up on analog, we didn't have a wealth of outboard gear. Um, we, so we had to choose wisely. Um, a lot of times we only had like eight, eight um, channels of compression, like a Personas ACP8 or something like that. And so um, my mentor taught me how to use groups to compress as, as a group, compress instruments in a group, or let's say background vocals together in a group. So I've continued to do that. I, I find great success doing that and find that my mixes sound really good. So I've kept on doing it. So I, I usually have a, a mono kick group, a mono snare group, and then those get combined. There's a stereo toms group, um, and all that goes into a stereo drum group, which then goes to the master. So none of my, in, in, uh, none of my input channels go directly to the master bus. They all go through a group first. Um, and that allows me to process that instrument as one. So if you think about a kick drum, yeah, you may have two microphones on that kick drum, but it's still one instrument. And you, the, the goal is to get those two microphones to work together cohesively to give you a big and, and great sounding kick drum. So I, I tend to process that kick drum in terms of compression um, in, in the group versus on each individual channel. I may have some light compression um, early stage compression on the individual channels um, at times, but my, my main processing is done on the group. Um, that's just how I do it. And, and gating, of course, is done on the individual channel. But um, so that's a kick, mono kick group, mono snare group, and then I have a mono bass group. Um, again, because sometimes I use a DI and an amp line. Um, this particular show, I was only using the DI line. Then there is Nazri, which is a lead vocal group. Again, that's a mono group. It can be mono because I'm not doing any panning in those groups. Um, and then I have a stereo toms group, a stereo horns group. Sometimes we do use live horns, mainly when we play um, locally in Toronto. The band is originally from Toronto. So um, when we play locally, they'll bring in a live horn section. Then I have a stereo tracks group. Uh, I tend to like to keep my master group in the middle, so it's it's always in the middle in front of me if I need to make any changes to that. Um, and then I have uh, stereo tracks, like I mentioned, stereo guitar, stereo keys, my stereo band group, and a stereo background vocal group. Now, I, I use my left and right, my master, to feed my matrices, or matrices, I'm not sure how you say that correctly. Um, but that's usually a left and right. When I have my own rig, I send my left and right to an external processor, an LM44, commonly. Um, that will then handle the distribution to the PA. But sometimes I go into situations, we don't always have our own rig. So I have a left, right, sub, and fill, and then a delay if I need to send out delay. And I also have a left and right matrix that goes to my lighting, my lighting guy. Um, he likes to have an in-air mix directly from my console, so he's not hearing it delayed um, through the PA, depending on how far away we are or if there's delay put on the PA. So I'd send him a direct um, mix to his ears. Now, I'm still using the matrix, so it's, it's important to note that when you dial the left and right into the matrix, if you go to the matrix inputs here, you can select your master left and your master right as matrix inputs. When you're dialing both left and right into a mono subsend, you have to dial those at minus six for it to sum to zero. So if you dial left and right into the sub at zero, it will sum higher than, than, than unity on the, on the output side of the matrix. So it's important to understand when you're summing left and right or two inputs and you want it to sum to unity, then you have to dial it in at minus six. So that's what I do on my, that's basically my console layout. So I'll talk a little bit about how I, I, I drop those, de those, those faders in. So I like to do it on the board. So if you go to LCD function, which is this 
little button here and there's one on each bank. Once you press that, you can you will see different options. You can unassign faders, assign faders, swap faders, move faders around. So once I have my session set up and I won't get into patching and stuff because I know there are some that have gone before me that have done segments before me that have gone into detail with how to patch the console, how to set that all up. But once I have it laid out one to one and it's all patched, now I can customize my layout and remove stuff to, to make it visually easy to see. Um, I find usually Back in the analog days, I used to put little markers on the console um, so I knew where my hand was at any given time, just screws or nails or something. So I knew where my hand was um, or like, you know, staples into the rubber that you could pull out afterwards. But on digital consoles, you can't necessarily do that or a production company would be very upset with you for ruining their console. So I tend to lay out my console visually where it makes makes it really easy for me to see what is what and look at things in groups. I just always have found that very effective to do so. So once I have my console laid out, um, there are two ways to implement virtual sound check with copy audio. If you hit setup and go to audio IO, if everything is coming from the, um, the, the, the SD rack, then you could hit in the top right hand corner, hit um, there's a drop down menu that says copy audio to. And if I drop that down, my record is on that. Um, because I'm using the USB, it has to be patched in the copy audio page. Um, and then also, I also record my left and right mix. Um, so I come out of a record matrix and I go, so if I go back to my layer here, I have a record matrix on my left and right, um, which is what I'm using to my recording computer to record video. Um, but that left and right, I usually come out of that with an AES cable out of AES 1 and 2, let's say back into an AES input. Um, so that I'm not going back through a preamp again, it's just going AES to AES. And then when I go to copy audio, I can also copy my record left and right to my recording. Um, the reason why I do that is because the band sometimes will ask me for a board mix and by doing this it records it right off the desk. Sounds really great and the quality is really good. So this is similar to any other patching matrix that you will see if you use Reaper, it will look very familiar. If, you, if you've used other consoles in the past, it looks familiar. Um, and so you can patch where where the the signal is coming from and where it's going to for copy audio and that's how i implement virtual sound check for recording um, and when it goes to i'm using on the recording end a combination of tracks live and um uh, and reaper I've, I've recently started to use reaper so that's a little bit about how i lay out my console how i set it up um hopefully you guys found a lot of value out of this and join me next time and we'll talk a little bit about snapshots, um, macros, and integrating waves into the console. Thanks for joining me.